Hey guys, BJ the Brave here, back with another deck guide, and today I'm bringing you an Erica update. Guys, this is a really cool uh, control version of Erica. Now, when you look at this deck list, don't be fooled by the fact that um, there's a lot of different cards in the deck. That is actually quite deliberate. Um, it's, uh, well, we'll come on to that in a second. So, what are we trying to do with this deck? Well, Ultimately, we obviously want to make use of Erica's Warlord talent, which has recently received a buff. Uh, it only requires three faith to basically do one damage plus an additional two damage. And that's important. Remember, one damage first, then two, means it can get rid of like things like shields and then still do two damage, etc. Uh, so it's, it's always been a really powerful ability, I think. But uh, it's got even better now because once it goes up to five, it can stun the target. And that means if you are able to stun, for example, the enemy warlord, you know, if you can imagine things like Gordrang not being able to hit you with his big axe. You can imagine things like enemy sister's warlord not being able to pray, etc. So stun is pretty good right now. I, in fact, I would say that we are in a stun meta. I think stun is like pretty premium. So uh, it's actually a very, very good ability. Um, and it can kind of just beat the opponent down. It can just sort of like chip away death by a thousand cuts and be a wink on in itself. Now, what I've gone for in this build is uh, the idea is that we are a control build. So we have lots and lots of things that can help us control the board, even without getting uh, the, the faith point. Now, of course, we do still have the Relics of St. Catherine in every sister's deck. This is our kind of guaranteed um, way of getting uh, enough faith. And obviously in this deck, uh, that is um, uh, enough to do the Warlord power. Now, uh, you will notice I have actually dropped the uh, the two drop, the um, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, the prayer. Now, this is one that, like, I really, I don't know, like, <laughs> it's part of me that does think that, like, can you really have um, dropped this card because it's so good and it's such a good way of getting to, uh, uh, getting to the Erika Warlord talent. Uh, upgraded ability quick but the point is is that you're often just putting it on for that and i think what's happening now with sisters is we've reached a point where the card pool has become big enough with so many good cards that um it's a real struggle to fit everything in hence another reason why we've got a lot of one ofs in this deck so speaking of which let's go through the cards now we we have only got one devout warriors i think we most decks previously ran two but i think with a control deck um, we don't necessarily want to because we don't want to kind of fatigue ourselves before enemy control decks. But I still think that having one is important because, uh, especially with a deck where we've got lots of one offs, which means you have lots of different tools and the, you can have the right tool for the situation, but you have to draw those tools. So I'm kind of happy with just one Devout Warriors in this deck. Now, Beacon of Faith is one of the most busted cards in the game right now, guys. Make no mistake about it. I'm not crazy. I do understand. I do get it, right? This is one of the most busted, cheap stratagems in the game. However, with the kind of deck that we've got here, we're not able to make, like, massively good use of it. So, obviously, Junith decks, where they go wide with, like, loads and loads of bodies, Beacon of Faith is just unbearably good. Uh, but this deck is not that kind of thing. We've got a lot of like reactive plankers and things like that. Um, it's still, I still feel like I, I can't quite cut both of them. I still feel like, uh, <coughs> you know, even just a heal on Erica can be nice. Um, and there are situations where it can be good, but I probably wouldn't want two of them in my hand. So the minute I'm, I'm on one, um, I would like to test like not having any, but it's just too good a card for me to kind of go down to zero. Now, I've got a single Crusader and double Preacher as my two drops. Um, I figure that um, with Erica being able to give plus one health, like playing Crusader out first turn and making it four health is actually pretty good. It's actually pretty survivable. Um, and that can mean that Erica can start generating faith. Now, um, once you have reached the magic number of three, again, this deck, we're very much looking, that's our first big milestone. Um, because this thing then becomes insane value for two. I also like having it because we do run a, mir a miraculous feat, and that means for only five energy, we can basically have an unkillable board. Uh, we can hide things behind an un unkillable uh, vanguard. It's an, a trick now that is old news, I know, but that's like the cheapest way of doing it. Uh, then obviously we run Amalia, because why would you not? 
Now we do run the new car, the Minister and Priest, and a couple of reasons for that. First of all, it's just a really, really good three drop in terms of tempo. Playing it on three is very good. Um, but also it means that, for example, you can pray with the priest and basically give Erica uh, five melee attack, allowing her to control anything that's on the board. So you end up with uh, that nice balance of like praying and attacking. Uh, and that means you can control, again, it's a good control tool because that means you can basically remove stuff. As I said, I've only got one Miraculous Feat. We all know how great this card is. Absolutely, you could run two of them. If you if you can find the slot for it, you could definitely put two in. But I, I feel like one has been um, okay uh, at this stage. And there's so many other cards I want to get into the deck. Uh, one of those is Right Restoration. This card is really good. It's got even better since things like the Rhino have come out. Uh, one Cleansing Flames. Again, another card that is, uh, you know, you, you kind of want to, right? But... Um, uh, I am uh, struggling to fit everything into the deck, so I've gone for a single Cleansing Flames. We've got the Hollowed Martyrs in for the kind of long game, and we've got the Double Relics. I have got one single Retributor. Um, I am, I do think that right now Retributor is quite good in the meta. There's a lot of stealth units with three health, which this can actually get rid of. Um, there's also uh, a lot of um, uh, like just three health units, whether it's guard or drones or sisters stuff so i feel like retribute is pretty good right now and it is removal on a stick whereas cleansing flames can deal with those units too but you're not actually progressing the board retribute or you are progressing the board and you've only got it only costs two as well so it's actually a really really underrated card retributor now i do run a copy of the new card the sacred rose now guys this card is absolutely busted but i, I really do think that one copy is is, is perfect Deploy two Sacred Rose Sisters. If you've got three flank, sorry, if you've got three faith, give them flank. Let's take a look at the Sacred Rose Sister. Now guys, this card is not a rally effect. So basically, if you have the faith, it will just trigger these abilities. So for one faith, we're talking about a two melee, three range attack because you get plus one, one. But if we've got that magic three faith, which obviously we really want to be playing this once we have three faith because it gives them flank, what we end up with is essentially two two threes with four health each now they can come on and immediately um pray which good which gives them shield that is like seriously good going guys or obviously if you need the removal you've got essentially six uh six damage worth of re removal on range attack for only four energy like that's absolutely bonkers value right eight health for four energy for six flank i mean it's it's just such a power creep it's so good but like i said to get that level of power you do need to have the three faith and that's why i think one copy is good because you probably like you can definitely play this on e4 and you'll have a slightly powered down version of it and that's still pretty good by e4 but um if you wanted to play this with the three faith then it's probably uh, one that you're going to play later and that's why i don't mind not having it in the opening mode. All right, we got the double seraphim because this is one of the best kind of like flank removals. We've got a single rhino. Now, guys, this is one card that if I had the second one, I would run it. All right, uh, I, I really do think that uh, uh, this card is uh, very, very powerful. Um, and of course, being able to play it and then pray, <coughs> uh, getting the sister rose out, and for Erica being able to perhaps give the rhino an extra ping of health, put it up to six health, that's a super powerful turn. Also, don't be scared to, um, if you've got that in hand, like use your right of restoration on it on turn five. So turn four, you play that. If they remove it, you then bring it back for only three and you've still got two energy left as well. Super powerful tempo, that, guys. And it's it's pretty much GG if you get that off. Now, I do run a single Spirit of the Martyr because we're not running um, we're not running the fla fla Flagellants. And so I feel like we need a little bit of AoE. And so the Spirit of Martyr just gives us that kind of uh, deal with any width of board. I know Cleansing Flames is a little bit of AoE, mini AoE, but Martyr's like gives us that big, big clear outside of an eight, uh, you know, an eight faith divinate, divine intervention, which of course we've got one of the best removal cards in the game. Uh, on top of that, we got Astrid. Uh, again, I have got level 40 on the Forge, so I often do take the uh, discount an infantry card by two defense stratagem which means that we can play Astrid on the second turn on e3 which is super powerful and then we've got what else we got uh we've got a, a single dominion superior i always like this card in erica always felt like it's uh, really nicely complementary right because 
the card comes down for only two faith we can basically get this ability where it does one damage then another damage and you combine that with like the hero power that's five damage and what one two three four different pings and five damage so that can deal with armored stuff really well and honestly it's amazing how often i've like just won the game with dominion superior and uh, you know like w the, the warlord power and then the warlord attacking that's seven damage just just from that so um it's actually quite a bit of range that's almost the same as double death from above right um so I, I do like dominion superior i did wonder whether this is a card that we could drop with new cards in potentially we could but like i say i kind of want to i want to keep you know, I could drop it and have another four drop, like another rose or retribute, but then everything's a four drop. Um, and I, I do think it fits like a slightly different role. So again, we're trying to have like a removal tool for every situation. Um, so we do run one Zephyrin Superior. Um, and one of the reasons for this is that we only run one card draw. So I figured like having this does mean that we can kind of pray to draw as well. It's a pretty cool ability. It's a pretty cool flanker. Like the fact that you can, it's the only flank in the game where you flank when you've got nothing to kill because you can actually pray so it's pretty nice but the other reason why i really like having one of them is again to do with that defense stratagem okay the one that gives us uh let us discount a infantry by two meaning we could play this on e3 so what that means is i've got a flanker uh the way i built this it means that we've got a flanker on four somewhere we've got a flanker on four we've got a flanker on five and then we run the Zephyrins, which flank us on six. So it kind of gives us really good flexibility with that discount card. Like, is it E3 and we, we need the five drop? Or is it E4, we need the six drop? Like, it really gives us flexibility. And that's what you want in a control deck. You want flexibility. You want to be able to respond to whatever situation is in front of you. Now, I do run the double Celestian Sacrosan. Also a good target for that defense spell. Playing this on E4 is really powerful. Uh, and again with Erica, you can often make this this is often a seven health with one armor and remember going from six to seven health when you've got armor is actually quite a big deal and if this thing survives and it can heal itself it can become a real problem and i think Erica is a really because of the extra health ability i really think that um, Erica, this 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 guy or girl is best in an Erica deck and uh, we've got the double zephyrin as i as i mentioned uh, giving us some uh, some pretty good removal for kind of bigger units and then we run a single emperor's judgment now guys uh i love the artwork on this but this card is really good guys i i, I think this is really good like um you you can imagine it's like this is a control day imagine it's like turn 12 like e or turn you know e12 let's say e12 and you've got 12 faith right i know it sounds like like but that those situations do happen and that's the stage of the game also where people are going to be playing big stuff, right? They're going to be playing Bane Blades. They're going to be playing, uh, you know, Dreadnoughts or... Uh, <coughs> what's that what's the Imperial Guard tank called? The Nine Drop. God, it's totally forgotten. Um, but the big stuff. And the thing about this guy is it just kills it. And what you can do is, imagine like it's E12. You play this and you've got 12 Fae. You can play this. It kills, uh, you can play, sorry, you can play three energies worth of stuff first. Then you play this, it puts you down to zero. But because you kill the troop and you've got 12 faith, you go back up to 12. So you end up back up to more than what this costs. It's an insane, like, tempo swing. People say, yeah, but you can't do anything till turn nine. Yeah, that's true, but you've only got one of them. And we've got so much removal in here. We've got so many tools that... Um, this just makes me feel much safer in the late game and less reliant on purely getting the divine intervention so this being a control build i do think it's worth it there are other erica builds that aren't necessarily focused on like control where i could see you not running that uh, but i i actually think it's i actually think it's really really good here and we run the triumph of saint catherine as another end game wing con as well um so yeah that is the deck guys uh, obviously in terms of the mulligan we of course want to be looking for relics depending on if we're up against kind of like what we're up against if it's like aggro then sometimes i'll keep a zephyr in or a cleansing flames or something like that um and uh, of course we're really looking for those two drops those crusaders those preachers and those priests uh so if of course you've got the defense the level 40 defense stratagem then you can think about that as well so that's when you can think about keeping like five or a six drop like a celestine sacrosan or uh 
an Astrid or something like that. So that is the deck, guys. Uh, now let's uh, have a look at how it works in the game. Alrighty, so first up we got Megas. So I think we could keep the Retributor here. This is one of the only downsides of Retributor is I'm never sure when to keep it. Because obviously if we've got the two, then it's a superb tempo card. But if you haven't, then it's a bit of a dead spot. So I got rid of it. Uh, I think I might regret that, to be honest. But let's see. So typical kind of first turn with Erica. You drop the two drop and then you give it the extra health. And this is how you generate faith with Erica, right? Okay, so we actually uh, had the Celestian in this one. We ended up dropping the Celestian, but uh, the Celestian was a one-off as well. Uh, so another another one of those where, like, if you want to uh, tweak the numbers slightly, I think that's the only thing that's uh, different in this version. So we healed there so that this couldn't be killed. Now we're going to get rid of the poison. I think, obviously, there's no point in healing this now because he can take it out. So you want to go and heal, uh, heal the other one. Or should I say give health to the other one? Okay, yeah, the perfect answer with the Gene Stealer. A little bit rough for us after a good start. I mean, honestly, we could have just gone with the Sacred Rose there. We could have actually wiped out both of those units. So, I'm not sure I, I like that player, really. It does mean, though, that this turn we can do it. So, no, we can do this and we can drop the, like, the Preacher, for example. We want. Yeah, and we can just trade with the flanks. I mean, that card is so good, guys. It's so good. I mean, it might even be more correct to play two of those in a control deck and only one of the rhinos. Okay, so he's making use of this and he's basically going ahead and trying to. Trying to. Uh, Bank some neophyte initiatives. The day of ascension approaches. Okay, Dominion coming in clutch. And again, the one odds at the different curve level just mean we can kind of flesh out our curve. We can play nicely. That that worked really nicely on E7. And then these these guys, these gals, praying now with the shields, they're a real problem to get rid of, right? Okay, he hits us with the underground network. We get a little bit lucky that he gives us the barricade there. We're going to get rid of the poison. We cannot keep that. Now there's a question of like whether we stun here. And I think we decide to stun because we're like we're not in a rush. Like Once we've hit 5, with, with this deck, we're not in a rush to kind of uh, get up to 8. And obviously in one turn from next turn, from E9, we can play the Relic and still do Divine Intervention to completely wipe his board. So there's no rush and we can kind of disguise it a little bit that we've got. That we've got it. And once you've got five uh, energy, uh, five faith anyway, you really want to be making use of Erica's stun ability. So, 
Good turn for him. <coughs> one of his big combos played with his near fights, and he's obviously got this one down as well, so. Now, we could have thought about Divine Intervention there, but... I guess we just figure that we're pretty healthy still, so why not wait for the second wave that's inevitably coming? And now he's just played that, we know that that's a fact. Didn't want to play the Rhino there because, because we made the decision to attack. Okay, once this guy comes down, we know we know the board's going to end up much bigger. Yeah. So this looks like a much better divine intervention. Or does it? Maybe not. Okay, so what we're doing actually, this is quite a clever trick really, once you've got the miraculous feet on. You can basically just play, yeah, look at this, so we can just get rid of all the sabotage, fuel up on our um, faith points, just go defensive. And now, it's like, what does he do? Does he develop the board? Well, that's correct, to get himself a resource. These things are getting buffed, but they can't do anything. Okay, develops onto the board, throws away spells. And uh, obviously we've only done that because we have got the answer. So divine intervention it is. And this is a perfect turn now for the Rhino. We can heal and we can pray to make use of the Rhino. And then we can basically stun the Warlord. This thing comes out with all the buffs, it's got flank. Oh, it hasn't got flank, sorry, that's off the rose, isn't it? But it's got the plus one health. That's what I meant. Stun the Warlord. Really problematic turn for him. And that's why it was good that we played the Relic when we did. So that the next turn we could Divine Intervention and still have energy to spend on building the board. Okay, so... One of his other big combos there with Sanctus. Doing the work. Okay, we got some big cards here. We still need to get rid of this. So we... Of this... Uh, Poison supplies, which we now duly do. We actually use the Emperor's Judgment. And this is what we mean, guys. We've got 12 faith. See that? We played 3 energy. Then we played the 9 drop. It goes back up to 12. Now we can just drop St. Catherine. And even if he's got his big spell, which steals her for a turn, we're at that health where health amount where it's it's okay like you would never do this if we were down to like sort of 10 health but we're okay here wow oh my god <laughs> how many of these things has he had this game there are like three four of them yeah he can't clear it gg okay so next up we have got war shaper and not just any old war shaper Playing Lord's Edge, who's probably the best Warshaper player in the game. He's finished top of the Tower leaderboard, or like the top three for pretty much the last three seasons. <coughs> like that he's changed his name to Lizard King Edge as well. <laughs> so this is a very aggressive deck. Uh. Kind of nice, like, typical kind of aggro versus control thing going on here. Now, we don't have a two drop this time. So, it's a quite a weak turn one for Erika when you don't hit the two drop. That is a real problem. You know, that's one advantage that, say, Junif has, or even the new Warlord has. So 
So here we go. Perfect. What I was saying in the deck guide at the beginning, you know, making use of the... Uh, because we have the 1-5 health flanker, making really nice use of the uh, defense strap there. Interesting. I think you can only put that down to one, though. Yeah. Pretty nice value for us there. We actually go with the relic. I wonder whether we'd do the Hollow Martyrs there, but we just want to get on with it. So we could we could have cleared the board. I don't know, maybe maybe Hollowed Matters would have been better there, to be honest. But, now, because we did play the Relic, uh, that's really going to help us on this next turn, right? And this is where Erika's abilities are so good against, like, shields. She's going to do one ping to hit this, and then it's going to do two damage afterwards, which means it puts it down to two health course means we can clear Erica and then we can drop the priest. So it comes back as with a crew tox rider. Now what thing you can expect from this warshaper deck, especially when you're playing edge, is like really really solid tempo. Like it's just gonna be relentless and on you. If you don't keep up then you kinda of done. Now Good counter to the stealth here, just to drop this guy and give him the extra, the extra health. But he has the rampage. This this card is like so brutal at taking out big stuff, like Lehman Rust tanks and all that sort of stuff. Um, and he's able to to meet us with the perfect answer, really. So now we're going to put the Hollowed Martyrs on. Because basically, by killing the stealth drone, this guy's going to take one, which means if he attacks us, then he, he just dies. We're going to kind of put this out. Mainly just as a distraction, I think, at this point. Like, again, this type of Warshaper deck, you, you kind of have to put things out. You can't just let him beat you down. It, even though it's an inefficient trade for us, we still kind of have to do it, right? Because it's just absorbed four damage. Love his card back, by the way. This is the card back you get for level 50 on the forge. Now, because we did it that way, the Zephyrin can actually take this out rather than using the Zephyrin, which is much, much better. You can attack face, and that will, uh, with the Martyrs, that will kill that off. Then we can just drop the Crusader. Feeling quite close to stabilizing, but we are low on health. And again, Sephirin's beautiful here. We figured out that with a the heal there, that we could trade and keep that alive, so that's nice. Still only got four faith, so we're still not stunning this guy, which would make a massive difference if we could. Because this guy is another one that benefits every time he strikes, he heals. So he's doing a good job at keeping us off of the uh, five faith points. But like I say, he's a good player. He's, it's, it's all very deliberate. He'll he'll be calculating that. He'll be doing everything he can to stop us from getting to that five. Now, we use Divine Intervention here. This is a player that... I wonder whether a lot of people would, would do this as well. Like, it's, it's one of those cards that people often get greedy with. But, like, I really do think that was absolutely the right the right thing to do, to use Divine Intervention. Not to mention we've got Emperor's Judgment in hand. Plus, Tau Duck, this Tau deck only plays 
like medium big units. They don't play like giant units. So now we've got the five, we can stun this guy. And I'm feeling much more confident at this stage now. But I've got to say, like, this is like the first turn where I do feel it. And I think that's because, you know, we used the Divine Intervention and then we have finally got stunned to our Lord. So now he just kind of goes all in, all in on the stealth to try and set up you know, like a potential lethal or wipe or something. Can clear that. We're going to hit him with the flames. And then we can uh, essentially Spirit of the Martyr now. That's two, three, four. Not to mention, obviously, we had martyrs on. And we finished the game. Alright, next up we got Denkla. So we go with a preacher and heal. There's the rattling. And the shock troop. I don't like this player. I didn't really think this through because now he can just remove that for free and then he can remove that for one. So I'm not really sure about that. I think. Uh, I mean, it's really difficult keeping up with uh, AM in uh, in this early game. That this is something that they really excel in. So it's not easy anyway. So, we don't feel like we can play the relic just yet. Rattling is such a good two drop. He's played Cadia Stand. Do we drop this even though we can't pray? Because we want to try and get ahead on tempo now, knowing that this is coming every turn. We need to be able to respond to it. Pressure is on. This card is like, you know, very negative synergy with Kadia Stand. No chance for it to ever attack twice. Again, we could have done Relics and we could have Righteous Fury there, but we'd have had nothing on the board. So we're kind of like trying to get ahead on the board. And with this player coming down, I'm glad that I did that. And it shows you like the importance of being ahead on the board there. Now because of the armor, my warlord power is not enough here. So we do use Amalia to kill this. So that we can then basically clean clean up the board. Attack with our warlord. Okay, so he drops the Shock Trooper and the Ogryn, and heals the Ogryn as well. Nice, nice move with Denkler this, by the way. Like, this thing at 7 health with armor is really, really quite, quite tasty. <coughs> so we actually go with the, uh, the heal and say, okay, you've got a big guy with armor, well, we've got a big guy with armor too. You gotta get nervous when the Vox operator comes down. Now look at this player, Cassacrin. Is, is this the player I'm thinking? Lead by example. So it heals up the the Vox. So we can draw and still play the Zeph and the right, Righteous Fury if we want. So 
So I think we actually decide that the Crusader's better here. <laughs> uh, the Righteous Fury's not on stun yet, so it couldn't remove. So it makes more sense to play this, I think. <coughs> Down comes the Rogal Dawn. This is where having Emperor's Judgment and Divine Intervention, I think, is uh, in this matchup, you're just super happy you have that. Because I think just one of them is probably not enough. He uh, managed to get a load of faith, four faith back as well. And now we can fear the Righteous to start burning him down. The big question is, has he got Siege Warfare? Or is that... Oh, is he? I mean, at this stage, <coughs> looks like the game's over, right? Watch this return. Astropath. Use hero power to duty. <coughs> well, he draws his Siege Warfare, plays the Vox Operator. He's only got two, two energy left. <coughs> That's okay. High command. Refill all his energy. What a hell of a turn this is, and then Siege Warfare. And now because he played the Foxcaster, the tanks can attack. Absolutely support some blind turn that. You should pause this and re-watch that turn like 10 times if you're an AM player. That was next level stuff. This guy is 3,179 MMR, so got a good player here. But we uh, find the faith needed for the big divine intervention. And that's pretty much all she wrote. Yeah. He's out of here. GG. Alrighty, next up we got Uriel. We actually keep that hand. And we go Thunderstorm, right? Because with Uriel we're expecting aggro. It's not always the case, but that is generally what we're expecting with Uriel. Uh, by the way, if you've not seen my Uriel aggro deck, that should be up on my channel now, so go and check that out. Super, super good marine deck right now. It's very well into sisters, for example. And here's why. As you can see, that hero power just stops prey in its track. Now, we did calculate that he wouldn't be able to remove this, so that's good. And it's like, oh, do we use the hit? Well, we got the priest, so I think it's better to do that. So we do heal the preacher because we just want to stop his warlord power uh, from from kind of killing that. It forced him to attack, which is what he just did there. And now, because he uses Master of the Fleet to stop the prayer, he's used two of his three energy. So we might be playing a little bit. We might be forcing him to play off curve, and and that's what you want to do in in the card game. You want to try and disrupt your enemy's player as much as play well. Run turns. Again, you can see this problem we've got, can't you? It's almost impossible to pray against Uriel. What we're doing is, by doing this, is we're forcing him to spend two of his four energy. Now, he plays this, but then he's got the high factory. So, he still gets to play his Warlord power for cheap. Such a good power against sisters, like... It's so demoralizing playing against Uriel's sisters. Yeah. We actually decided to just use this power um, and kill it this way. I, I don't know about this turn, really. Like, I think we've kind of realized that the faith thing's not working. But we're not able to get uh, 
get faith, so I wanted to just keep the unit healthy. I think we just use the Righteous Fury to finish it off. Still only doing one damage. We're still no, f no faith points. We don't attack here. Playing around like Storm Raven a little bit. She's got the point blank. So I'm kind of happy to trade the Zephyr in there. And then just follow it up with a big Celestian. Potentially I would play the superior and pray if we had a decent Righteous Fury, but with no faith points it's just not worth it. We might as well just slam this guy down off curve. Now again, Master of the Fleet. Normally this is a great way of Erika generating some faith, but no chance against Uriel. No chance at all. use the beacon here just for a simple two health on three units don't have any faith so we don't get any of the OP stuff from it but that's why I'm saying that's one of the cards that potentially could be dropped Sure, why he didn't hit this one to be honest. Yeah, yeah didn't make a ton of sense. I'm gonna use this to draw, which is nice. He'll heal, heal. heal. And I basically just heal everything up because I'm not I'm not really that worried about the one two. Um, it's got a lot to get through and it can do one damage on here. But I wanted to kind of like have have a situation where he can't disrupt everything with the prayer or with his warlord ability. Me, yeah, he pretty much given up. GG. Alright. Okay, Abaddon. You are defining sacred ground. <coughs> face his judgment. <sighs> Double nine drop in hand, eh?
op talent. It's going to be pretty punishing getting, like, my hero powerful one now. Turn. Okay, this means we can pray now with the superior. It's pretty cool. Prayer for him to answer. Just used an AoE. You do have to worry about our health a little bit against Abaddon. Like, we don't want to get too low. That's why I actually went and healed Erica there. Seven health. Probably wants to. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, boy, now you're going to see the power. The Retributor, my friends. Could have obviously buffed the preacher to five and gone in, but I'd rather keep him healthy because I might want another uh, crusader. Okay, that's a nice combo for him for sure. Very nice combo. Enough to clear everything. Stop that from dying, can I? Uh, so that's okay. So what I'm going to do instead? I want to heal this. Yeah, let's heal this. Oh wait a minute! I did that wrong, didn't I? Oh, that's okay. <coughs> I 
Haldrake, number two. Oh no, he's got the execute! Oh no! No way, I was feeling so safe there as well. Oh no. Oh no. I was honestly feeling so safe there. doing everything to stop this um, this fifth point of faith as well like such a nail in the coffin against chaos if they if they keep getting their lord stunned Game is bonkers. Oh dear God. Oh dear God. Oh no, what a combo to get on a Black Crusade. Basically need the relic of Saint Catherine. Got one in seven chance of getting it. I think. I've only used one. Okay, so there you got it, guys. There is the deck list. Like I say, there's probably a few cards you could tinker with. Do you want the second Miraculous Feet? 
you want to put in uh, the um, a three drop um, uh, Vanguard, the Celestian. Do you want to obviously put the double Rhino in, which I think you probably do once 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 I've got it, I will probably do that. But the rest of the deck I'm actually pretty happy with. So uh, yeah, hit that like button and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think to the deck. Uh, how are you finding the sisters so far? I have not actually played with the new Warlord yet, but I will be getting that at the end of the raid and you can expect a deck guide for that one soon. All right, guys, take it easy. Thanks for watching.